Hello, hello, welcome everyone. This is part two of my color along out of Mythographic Deep Blue. This is the newest one out so far, um, as of the time I'm recording this video anyways. So part one, we tackled this background. We put some green on our cactus. We put a little bit of red in to bring the bottom um, of the sky into the rest of the page. So I think for part two, we're going to tackle some wood here and maybe some red rocks and maybe some barrels because we have our browns out and see how far we get. So I have my colors sharpened to a fine point. Um, I have burnt umber, dark brown, burnt ochre, goldenrod, and marine green. Um, so... I'm not, a, I have this based in beige also. The same beige that I used up here in the sky, I brought down into my wood. So I'm going to start with the burnt ochre just because I don't want to go for a super dark wood right off. And I'm going to bring it in and I'm going to turn it just a little. So one second. Okay, make sure I'm kind of centered. So again, burnt ochre, and I'm going to start right here up front and center, and I'm going to turn this just a dot. We can still see. I'm a lefty, so i got to tilt a little. And what I'm kind of doing is just starting at the end and bringing it out a little to the middle. So not a whole lot. Same thing going down. I'm not pressing hard because, again, I'm going to add some more colors, so this is just kind of playing. So then I can take my dark brown and kind of darken the end of this a little more. Again, not pressing hard. There's a knot right there in the wood I'm going to darken. And the lines are really delicate. They are thin lines, so I want to try to keep that throughout the page. Sorry for the sniffles, I kind of got a runny nose. Allergies. Okay, and then I'm pulling out that goldenrod. And then my beige, pardon the noise, I forgot to sharpen. That's just going to give us a very nice kind of light looking wood. If you want to add a little burnt umber, that's up to you. Just in a couple spots to kind of help give it a little wood look there. Okay, so that's basically what I'm going to do through this whole thing. So I'm just going to bounce back and forth between the goldenrod and the burnt ochre. Or the burnt, yes, burnt ochre. For some reason I thought I was mixing myself up. <laughs> and again, it depends on the wood you're going for. If you're wanting like a dark walnut stained wood, if you're wanting a more worn wood, if you're wanting a green-ish wood. So this is marine green, and all I'm going to do in a couple spots, not everywhere, is I'm just going to add a little green. And this is purely for my own satisfaction. And to me, that just adds a little bit of algae look and kind of brings this whole underwater look together. So this is my burnt umber, and I'm going down that very thin line on the inside of the door. This almost would be better done in fine liners, but this is also a good use for Prismacolor Verithians. They are Prismacolor, but they are harder lead, so finer details aren't so tedious. That's alright, we're getting it. Now, this is a little time consuming, so for those of you that don't like to layer or whatever, then you probably want to lay your colors down all at once and avoid the switching back and forth, but to each their own, as they say. Okay. 
all right sorry about the wiggles had to pause for a second so what I'm gonna do over here where these boards are kind of separated is I'm gonna take my burnt umber and again you want a really fine tip and I'm just kind of outlining where those are those are gonna be important Again, sorry for the sniffles. I like didn't have any runny nose or anything until I started recording and then sneeze attack after sneeze attack. Okay, also shadowing around the door frame so that it will pop forward a little. So it doesn't have to be super perfect. Pencil is short, so hopefully you can see around. Also gonna shadow around this little fishy. And this one as well. And that's just a later when I put my color in. He will already have a built-in shadow around him. I'm only shadowing the bottom of the fish. I am not going all the way around the fish. And I am remembering that fish has a fin on the bottom there. That I don't want to color in. Okay, and again, I'm going to sharpen this a little more here. with the super thin lines. Okay. So again, just the ones that are a little thicker. You don't have to do all of them. Try to stay straight and on the line. Um, we'll blend it out a little so it won't be a huge Nobody will notice if you don't. Be shadowing under that a little. Kind of building in my shadows here. So going down the side of these. I colored this crate here with my beige and not even noticing it was a crate. So I'm going to kind of work around that for now. And I will probably do that a different set of browns. So that it doesn't look the same as my building. I just didn't happen to notice that's what was going on when I was base layering. Okay. At the moment, I am just kind of playing with the front of the building here. I'm not doing any of my sides just yet. Tackle one thing at a time here. Okay, taking that burnt ochre. Anywhere I put that brown, I just want to put a little ochre over it. Now again, there are a million and one different wood combos. You can, you know, you can have a dark, dark browns, red browns, green browns. You can do grays um, for a more like rustic grayish look. Um, so you can really research those and pick the one that will fit your saloon theme perfectly. I went a more ready because of my sky. So I'm sticking with those red tones a little bit. It seems to be my theme lately. I must have a thing for red lately. Okay, goldenrod. And just because you put this goldenrod down does not mean you cannot come back later and adjust if you need to. This is just very simply kind of plotting out our colors here. Just kind of getting around this fish up here. And then I missed, so I also need to add this around my door frame a little so that that will blend out. And not look too weird. And then these right here as well. Let me blend it out. And I probably will come back at the end and really deepen up this brown here in the corners like that. But for the moment, I'm just gonna get my colors in. Okay, notice I didn't goldenrod everywhere. And if you need to, you can take your light brown and kind of shade 
get a little darker in spots that you need if you don't want the super dark look but you want a little more brown that's what your dark brown will do and this is kind of just playing adjusting how you like it so I will blend it with my beige and then I can see a couple areas already that need a little more attention, so I'm going to kind of work on those. And then again, if you lost your lines, go back and put those in. Now again, I left the lighter beige in so that I could come back. And that green would be visible. So um, if you don't like the green, I wouldn't leave the beige necessarily on yours. So this is how I'm going to do the whole section here. So again, blend it out with my beige. I'm going to go ahead and blend all these areas out. here as well um, I can see a couple spots I missed which is why it's kind of important to go section by section but that's okay I have a bad habit of skipping around okay and then again, I'm going to come in, kind of put those dark lines back in that got washed out. I'm going to play with a little bit of the lines in here. You don't have to do that, but just kind of adding some of that wood feel back in. And then green for my little algae. I'm going to smooth it out with this beige. I'm going to put my little line back in there. And that is going to be my building. So nothing too fancy, just a lot of switching back and forth pencils. I just threw that one on the floor. I'm kind of touching it up how you want it to look. goldenrod over here first. And then again, you can put as much of the green or as little as you see fit for your algae. So for these poles going down, I'm going to make them stand out a little more. So I'm going to go ahead and goldenrod those. Again, leaving that little crate there that I missed earlier. A little red to it, so it looks like it's the same wood at the very least. And then back with that 
Burnt Umber. And all I'm doing right here is kind of blending out that um, burnt umber that I put down so it doesn't look like it's going up and down. Just kind of blending out a little there. And that's the shadow behind the pole. That's not the actual pole I'm blending out. Alright, so the same thing up here, I'm going to sharpen to a fine tip. And I'm going to run it down all these little lines they have put in. I'm going to color in between the seaweed dark because I feel like it would be shadowed. Okay, I'm going to color this dark, dark, and I am going to blend it up to a highlight in the middle. Now this is more for my, because I like it than actual purpose, but I'm going to put that beige back in, highlight. Okay, now under that, wrong pencil. Back with the dark umber, I'm going to highlight or shadow under that whole arch. And then I'm going to bring it down with the burnt ochre. Now, if you don't have the beige down like I do, you will get a more golden-y wood look, which is also pretty. Again, darkening down that pole. Really making sure I got all the lines here. Okay, goldenrod. The lines are what's going to make this wood look grainy. I want to make sure it's carried through behind my letters. Okay, and then I'm also going to shadow under my letters. Now, not everything on this page will take this long, I promise. It's just the, this is the main part of the page, so it takes a little bit to get it looking right here. Okay, you can blend it out with this beige if you want. I'm going to blend it out a little first or you can add your green. Um, but I do want to try to fill in some of the white. Now again, the green I am doing for algae effect. So um, on a normal piece of a saloon, I would not add green. <laughs> the green and the red do have a nice effect with each other though. Okay. So we do want to try to keep them the same looking. So I'm going to add a little more goldenrod up here. And then I will darken a couple more slots with this. more with this. There. Okay, remembering that my saloon words are not finished, we are going to grab our Tuscan Red. We're going to sharpen it as well. 
uh, fine liners, sharpener, sharpies, whatever you have for this would work well too. But I'm going to outline my letters. Can't talk and concentrate apparently. Trying to stay off the wood and just the letters. All the way around with the Tuscan Red. This is also a great way if you got any brown on your red letters. I'm going to take one darker red, and I feel like that's not it. I'm going to take this one, we're going to sharpen. Broke it one second here. One second. Okay. So on our letters here, I am just, I'm not filling in the whole letter. I still want that bright red in the middle. I am just kind of smoothing the line between that Tuscan Red and the Poppy or the Scarlet, whatever you used if you used the same reds as me. So not filling in the whole letter, just kind of smoothing over any rough edges. My bar may be old, but I want my sign to look fairly new. Okay. And then wherever I set, I have to come back with my little red. I have it in a, another project cup, I'm pretty sure. Because I was, oh, right there. I was going to say, because I was doing red, white, and blue flowers with it. So this pencil has got a lot of love recently. Okay, and then just smoothing everything all together now with this one. So three colors on those little letters. Now you can take your dark umber, you can take sepia, you can take espresso, you can take a 90% French gray. I do not recommend black. Um, a lot of people jump to black for shadowing, not my favorite choice. This is the burnt umber, but what I kind of do is just kind of make it look like the letters have a little bit of shadow. Now I do this last, because if I do it first when I blend in my beige and my green for my algae, it's going to wipe this out and you're not going to be able to really see it. So. I do put this over top. And that just makes it look like our letters are standing a little bit off the building themselves. Fixing up here where I can see some wild spots bugging me. Me. I missed this whole like bottom corner right here. Okay, and then I am going to bring in a little more green. Green and red contrast, so that works out really well. They're opposites on the color wheel. So there is the first half of my saloon. <clears throat> that took a really long time. So for my barrels, I will probably do a different one. However, for these rocks here, I think I want to stick with a very western feel. So I'm going to pull my burnt ochre. I'm going to pull pumpkin spice. It's not pumpkin spice. Pumpkin orange. I apologize. I got pumpkin spice on the brain. I am ready for Halloween and fall. 
Um, <laughs> July came. We can we can skip to October now. That's fine with me. Okay. So pumpkin orange, burnt ochre, and probably a goldenrod. But what I'm going to start with is my orange, and I'm going to just very lightly base it. Now I am going to try to put quite a bit of detail in on these rocks, so I'm going to go very lightly. But I do kind of want this red, red rock look. I don't really know what color cliffs and rocks are underwater, but to me this lends to my western theme that I'm trying to keep applied here. Now because I'm me, I'm going to quickly do this one over here. Because even though I'm the one doing it, I will forget what color I started with and end up with two funky colored rocks. Okay. Then we're going to take the burnt ochre. And what we're kind of going to do is we're going to start shadowing and outlining. And I'm actually going to pull a terracotta as well. So if you have a terracotta, not your Tuscan Red, because I have done that before, does not work well. Um, I thought I had it right here. Okay, again, so this is a little redder, but still on the brown side. But it's a little darker than that burnt ochre. And I am putting a shadow behind all the edges here. Now, this is another one of those that kind of takes a minute to come together. I think it will look really nice once we get it all put together here. So behind all the rocks, we want a nice shadow. Behind all the dark lines, so just like that. I didn't do all these little ones. You can... They're not as important as separating the big rocks from each other. Okay. So I'm going to take that burnt ochre and kind of blend out some of that. Now, if you are a light to dark person, you will start with your goldenrod. And like the edge of this cliff here will be goldenrod because that's where the sun would hit up top. It will mark all the tops of our rocks here. And you will do the same thing I did, just reverse order. So like this one will be goldenrod, the top of this. Then you can see where I kind of need to put a shadow in right here. I'm going to darken the bottom of all of these. Okay. So darkening a little bit of caves and valleys with my burnt ochre here. Bring in my orange. Orange is like one of my favorites. All right, so we're just adding some orange, a little bit of everywhere, blending things together with it. Back in with this goldenrod up here. Now, if you want a little more depth, take one of your browns that you've used in your wood. And you can just kind of etch in some more detail that way. So, there is our page so far. Alright, there is a full view look at our page. I think it's coming out great. A little bit of a slow process, but that's alright. That brings us to B. So I hope to see you for part three. Questions, comments, let me know. Bye.